Oh, thanks. Well, yeah. why don't I go ahead and just call the meeting to order then? Um, <coughs> and we'd like to start the roll call, please. All right, Tom Dester. Here. Scott Holwick. Here. Roger Lang. Here. Renee Davis. Here. Ken Hewson. Here. Wes Lowry. Here. Kevin Bowden. Here. Hope Bartlett. Here. Alex Merkline. Here. Heather McIntyre is here, and Councilmember Christ is with us as a guest today. Cherry, have a quorum. All right, thank you. So, um, our first order of business today will be the election of officers. So, I'm going to open up the floor for nominations for the chairperson for the Longmont Water Board. I would nominate uh, Mr. Lang to serve as the chair this year. Are there any other nominations? Roger, are you interested in that position again? <laughs> Before I close well, the second? No. Yes, yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then I'll... We need a second. Need a second? Okay. Thank you. All right. All in favor of Roger being the chairperson for the upcoming uh, 12 months for one-all water board, signal by saying aye. 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 All right. Hearing no opposition. Roger, I'm going to turn the... Floor over to you for the nomination of vice chair. Thanks, Wes. Your term was short lived, wasn't it? <laughs> 60 seconds. But it's going to do a great job. <laughs> it's a great chair. <laughs> okay. Well, following his lead, uh, I'd like to uh, open a nomination for vice chair of the board. Are there any nominations for that position? I'd like to nominate Scott. I would, I would accept, but only tepidly. I <laughs> mean <laughs> tepidly. Is it yes or no, Scott? I, I said I would accept, yes. Okay. I just adding something. I mean, you. I will resoundingly second that. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little enthusiasm. Yeah, thank you for your enthusiasm. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I thought maybe. <laughs> okay, Scott's been nominated and seconded. All in favor, <clears throat> say aye. 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 Scott, and welcome back. Well, thank you. You're going to be Good with us for a while? Uh, on the sheet here, it says 2029, which seems like a really long way away. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even fathom it's 2029. It's really not, though. <laughs> yeah, it pretty quick. Well, it's, congratulations, Scott. Okay, I, did I do something? That was because... Uh, <clears throat> My, my term ended, your term ended. Term. and had we been here in July, I would not have been here in July because the council, I don't think, had me ready for right. July. So okay, but, I think that was a but, but you were rehired. In that I was reappointed, reappointed by council. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to item four, approval of previous month's minutes. Any questions or comments about our previous you know, I'd like to make a comment. Scott, did you get a chance to go through the minutes very closely? I did, but I'm not going to vote on it because I wasn't here. But I did get to that room. Well, I'm not going to ask you to vote on them. Did you understand them? Yeah. yeah. I actually okay. had a conversation, I think, with somebody. Had I talked about Cash and Lou, what we did with Cash and yep. I thought it was a good piece of work. Finally decided when we're going to do it, how we're going to, you know, so I was happy to see that forward so okay good so can I get an approval for the last meeting we had anybody want to approve the minutes like to uh, approve the minutes from what, what was the day? June 17th June 17th sorry I'm sorry, sorry. Here. second all right all in favor signify and say aye aye aye, aye. Okay. just for the record I have seen for those yep okay Kevin, the water status report. Yeah. So you wait on there. Yeah, that's what he's got there. All right. Be weird being on this side. You can glare at them. I always do. You're one of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's been a few changes since the last time we got together. Um, currently, the uh, gauge at uh, Lions uh, is running at 77 CFS. The 125 year historic average for this date is 114 CFS. Um, the call on the St. Brain River is the James Ditch, uh, which has a priority date of uh, uh, 1868, 
and the call on the main stem of the South Platte is Bijou Canal, and that's a 1888 um, uh, priority date. Uh, Ralph Price Reservoir at Button Rock Preserve is full and spilling, and Union Reservoir is currently at a gauge height of 26 feet or 11,327 acre feet, which is down about 1,400 acre feet from full. Um, Slug St. Green Reservoirs at the end of July were 81% of full. The same time last year, um, our reservoirs were at 85.2% full. So the reservoirs are a little bit lower than they were last year so at this time. I think this next month, we'll see a lot of our reservoirs going down quite a bit because we drained pretty hard during that hot spell. So. Any questions for Kevin? One other point is the Northern Water issued an additional 10% quota last Wednesday at a special water board meeting, so a special Northern Board meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So they did a supplemental. Right. So what happens when, I mean, that's water that you weren't planning on necessarily. So like, do we have a place to put it or do you, how, how does that water? Yeah, we, <coughs> We do. We've fortunately it has because it's been a little bit warmer. It affords us the opportunity to <clears throat> rent some additional water out for some of our farms that we that we own and we lease out. But kind of now, um, as part of the reservoirs being down, Clover Basin was down because it was down for um, some repair on its dam, and that repairs have been made. And so we'll probably put some of the CBT in Clover Basin so we can help use it to irrigate through Dry Creek and some of the parks on Dry Creek. So the timing is actually pretty good. Cool. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Any public invited to be heard? Yes? No? no? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Just a quick question on the CBT quota. Is that atypical? It's about every uh, about every two years or so they they'll a issue a supplemental quota. Okay. You, they have it. You can kind of go through and get the history, which is pretty neat. Um, see that history. Okay. Yeah, so they've earlier in the project they would issue a quota once, and that was it. Right. And then in the starting about early 2000s, they started doing their initial quota in November and then doing their supplemental quota um, after the spring water users meeting, took input from all the constituents. Okay. And then I think here in the last, about the last 10 years, they've done an additional, you might think it was the second quota, I think four times, something like that. So not unprecedented. Okay, it feels really novel to me, but. It's not very be. often though, when you think of it as being, that are issuing a quota since the beginning of the 19, 60s. It's, it's, a, it's a little unusual this year how late it is. So I, I can't think of going. I think there was only one other time that way back that they've done it this late. Okay, maybe that's my perception. That's probably what you're feeling. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Was the water use asking for it? Was it down? I mean, how did they happen to come? I think there was a pretty good request from some of the uh, ag users asking the board to reevaluate. Oh, I'm thinking okay. kind of the an uh, analogy that they got to be able to make it through this year even to get to next year. Yeah. And so there was a, a big need from the ag community and the board listened to that. Okay. Yes, Scott? Did you, uh, I don't think we have it in our packet, but if you look at the drought monitor right now, the extreme drought in the entire state, which is very unusual over the last, I don't know, dozen years or so, is right centered on Boulder and Larimer County and along the foothills towards I-25. So really, part of that was to address finishing crops for farmers who have crops in the ground, yeah. but you know ditches are dry. Uh, these 1860 calls have been all summer, frankly, on Boulder Creek, Platane Creek, uh, St. Frank Creek. So yeah. we're the hot spot this year, literally, and the dry spot. So it's mm -hmm. a big part of Northern's western side of this region. So it makes yeah. some sense. It's good it was available, or they were willing to make it available. So. There's it's been a strange, yeah. Uh, we just haven't had much coming over, that, so. Okay. 
Any agenda revisions? I have none. Okay. No. All right. Development activity. Yeah, so, and, and you're included in your board packet, was one development activity for the board to act on 8902 Quell Road Annexation, <clears throat> approximately a 17.34 acre annexation located north of Clover Basin Drive and east of Airport Road. Um, historic water rights consist of one share of Clover Basin Reservoir. There's a typo, it's actually one half share of James. The numbers were accurate, but we have written in your packet that it was three quarters and it's actually one half share of James. So the full 17.34 acres are subject to the full requirements of the raw water requirement policy. 18902 Quell Road annexation will be in compliance with the annexation requirements of the city's raw water requirement policy upon transfer of all historical water rates at time of annexation and the satisfaction of the 26.74 acre foot deficit time of final plan approval. This area is zone for residential mixed use. Um, there's, I think, currently four lots um, as part of this with three different owners. Uh, the concept plan proposes units with up to 18 uh, dwelling units per acre, so two and three story units, so it could be up to around 300 units in total. And that will come through when they go through with planning. This is just at the annexation level now. Now, is there some commercial in this area at all? No, to the to the east, um, towards uh, Holbert area, there is, but <clears throat> that's it. I think that's the closest. Commercial. Somehow, I thought there is. Uh, uh, there's a little there. strip mall right there at uh, <clears throat> Clover or uh, Airport or something. Yeah, up clear up by Nelson Road. On the far left end, there's some of my. No, there's a, there's a new one. Brewers down there. Yeah, there's yeah. the bearded brewer. The bearded brewer. The bearded thing brewer thing okay. Or whatever all that. Yeah. So I guess there might be some. A little bit, not, not a lot. It's just a tiny. Yeah. It's next to that. So I said that was. Yeah. Uh, apartment complex. Something. How many units did you say? So the the comp plan proposed up to 18 units per acre. And what are they? What are they saying they're going to have, or have they stated what? We don't know. They haven't said that'll that'll come through after annexation. That's just generally described that they're proposing up to 18 units per acre, okay. which is not un, uncommon with yeah. an annexation. Okay. Any other questions about this? Anybody want to make a motion to move forward with it? I make that motion, um, Roger, to move forward with that for City Council's review. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Move and second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 How would you say aye? I did. Okay. Okay. General business. MTNA, Cold Stone Canyon Fire Report. Alex, are you going to yes. give us a little information on this? Uh, yeah. Compared to 
hammer peak fire as I saw when I was in college. It's a lot less severe of a fire out there. Vegetation wasn't as heavily impacted. Um, as we can see out here, they did pretty well the job at protecting some houses, but unfortunately five houses still burned and one individual was killed. Uncertain exactly how, they're still investigating that. And here's another fire we took while out there. Um, some of the issues the city uh, in, were involved in during the fire, uh, we had a problem with fire retardant making its way into the St. Brain Supply Canal, which the water treatment plant draws from. Uh, the city got in contact with Northern Water to shut down the canal, and with loss of that water supply, we then ended up shifting towards using the Carter Lake Connecting Pipeline and the Highland Ditch as our main sources of water. Uh, another issue we had with kind of post-fire was the sediment and debris flows, including ash flows as well. Uh, our issues with that and concerns was the contamination from rain events that could possibly occur. The National Weather Service had a has a model in which they can predict kind of what flows would cause it issues for us, and they found that about one to one and a half inches of rain would be the trigger for some of these large flows. Uh, the concern, given an event such as this, would be whether it would overwhelm the infrastructure down there and cause issues for containment in the St. Brain, as well as the St. Brain Supply Canal. Here's a image of the drainage basin for Stone Canyon. Mm -hmm. As that kind of shows, you can kind of see a significant portion of it was burned in the fire, and so issues with that would be, you know, runoff from significant rain events, but again, a one to one and a half inch uh, rain event would be quite a lot of water. Um, and so, <laughs> just to make sure I'm visualizing it properly, the real concern is runoff getting in the St. Brain supply ditch, or is there runoff concerns in the valley? So both. Both? Yeah, okay. both. Um, All right. And so, stone for, uh, precipitation event of one to one and a half inches would generate about 80 to 100 in CFS worth of water, which is quite a bit of water. Um, but uh, Lyons owns and maintains a detention pond towards the mouth of the canyon. Uh, and the pond, which is upstream from the Stone, or St. Brain Supply Canal. Uh, so if we were to get flows, we have reviewed and seen that the detention pond would be enough to limit how much contamination would occur in the St. Brain Supply Canal or get to the St. Brain Creek. And in the instance where we were to get debris flows, which would block up water, there's a constructed weir uh, over the St. Brain Supply Canal, which would, you know, kind of re-divert all that water away from St. Brain, St. Brain Creek as well as the canal. Um, and here's just an overview of the entire area down there and kind of showing where our water treatment plant is in regards to the fire as well as the St. Brain Supply Canal and the city's turnout. Uh, and then here's an image I got together uh, just kind of showing the burn scar that's been left over. The image on the right is enhanced to kind of show vegetation and in this instance the lack of vegetation because of the fire. Um, and so the city is going to be coordinating with Northern Water into the future, given that it is their infrastructure that can be impacted by this. Uh, the initial assessment from Northern Water found it to be, found the fire to be of lower intensity uh, and was made up mostly of back burns, which is essentially where firefighters uh, try and do smaller controlled burns to limit the amount of fuel for the fire in its path. Uh, one thing about uh, the St. Brain Supply Canal is there's very little drainage into it, which is protected by an upgradient drainage system, which limits how much uh, sediment and flow can come into it from the, the hill. Here are some photos from Northern Water near the St. Brain Supply Canal. <coughs> Um, and then here's also an image showing Alexander Mountain Fire and the Stone Canyon Fire, just to kind of show you that ultimately we 
where in what way you can say lucky with this fire. It was nothing incredibly severe or you know widespread. Um, and so last thing I'll say, Northern Water said they will continue to monitor flows at the St. Brain Supply Canal trash rack, which is located uh, right before the city's turnout. And so that'll be very, very good to have uh, their input on what kind of quality water we're getting through there if we're getting you know, a lot of sediment coming through there. And similarly, the water treatment plant is also going to be continuing to test for total suspended solids to see if we're pulling in any water that's contaminated. But it's looking good. Who was involved in fighting the fire? Uh, Several jurisdictions or? I don't know entirely. I would imagine Lyons was very involved, but um, other than that, I don't know. We were a little lucky in that most of the smear bombers fly out of Broomfield at Jeffco Airport. We're on, you know, way up to Alexander Mountain Fire. Some of them <coughs> started and dropped some bones. Oh, really? Um, so, not all of I mean, they didn't take them all, but they kind of, they kind of split between the two fires, and, and that helped a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, I didn't know that. You had, you had the fire equipment. They also pulled some of the firefighters off of the Alexander Mountain Fire. They, they really, Larimer County, Office of Emergency Management, was um, managing the Alexander Mountain Fire until the U.S. Forest Service took over. It usually takes U.S. Forest Service a couple days to come in on a major fire that's on U.S. Forest Service land. And so the initial response is your local firefighters, but then the Forest Service takes over. Once they took over command of that, then Larimer County coordinated um, assets between the two fires. and. Not that we we're lucky that there was a, I mean, well, I wish I was in a fire, no fire hadn't happened, but because we were lucky and that it was close by and, and, and the assets from, from both fires were shared yeah. and coordinated by Larimer County Office of Emergency Management. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, no disrespect, but. Lion fire and hygiene fire are not, not big enough to well, be on that kind of a fire. I did, yeah. yeah. I tell you, there's a lot of slurry bomber traffic. There was. Going on, I'm telling you, it was. I was impressed by how many were flying around. Well, that's good. I realize that, yeah. Uh, an anecdote and a question. Um, if you want to see a really cool picture, cool, relatively. Um, St. Brain Left Hand was doing a tour with state ag officials that day, and they were up against the backdrop where the first pictures they had showed the Alexander Dawson plume north of the site. And after a while, you saw a second plume right behind the hill that they were in front of, which was the, the Stone Quarry fire beginning. So they were there live, real time, taking still photos, and you can actually see differentiating <coughs> both plumes. That was the anecdote. Um, I think that at least some of the fire act activity was uh, they used reservoir water too. Did that happen? I think it happened in Lyons, didn't it? Did they were they dropping some reservoir water? I was curious if they were where that where that water came from. If, if it was anything within Longmont's service area, any of Longmont's reservoirs or not? Hadn't hadn't I haven't heard on that. Yeah. Um, well, some of the helicopters dipped. I think. There, there was some dipping, and I just don't know if it was specific to Lyons or if it was only Alexander Dawson. Um, which is a bigger fire, but there was definitely some, some because there, there's some statutory provisions that allow for that, depending on how the counties have set that up. And I didn't know what, what our position is as a city or a municipality participating in allowing water to be, well, not allowing it, but knowing that water is going to be taken out of say Button Rock and dropped on fires, right? So we, yeah, so we, A, every April, we let the guard train at Button Rock. Yeah. So, yeah. so they pull out of Button Rock then. And they, they, we have a long standing agreement with the U.S. Forest Service that yeah. allows them to, to dip out of Longmont's reservoirs. Um, on the Calwood fire, they actually preferred to dip, because it was closer, dip out of foothills. And they got permission, and, and the Highland Ditch Company yeah. allowed them to dip out of foothills. Probably that's why, they, if they dipped, it would have probably been foothills closest to Stone Canyon. Yeah, possibly. Um, 
I just, I didn't know the answer. I just thought you guys might know. Yeah, it, it, it just would have been a lot more effort to dip out of Button Rock because of the canyons. You got to fly over. Well, probably also the way the plume was coming too at the time. Yeah, that would be yeah. difficult to fly over. So, cool. Thanks. Any other questions for Alex? Thanks, Alex. No problem. Yeah. <coughs> okay, 10B Water Conservation Program update. Oh. Yeah, I just have a quick verbal update. Um, you guys may have seen in the Colorado Sun this morning that um, the article about Denver Water's peak demands um, and you know that Monday morning time slot. We're seeing similar trends, um, and so that's just. I, I actually had a meeting this morning about um, trying to do an educational campaign next year to try and get folks to change their. Like the article said, we think that um, irrigation clocks come preset Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, and people just leave them on those days. <clears throat> so doing an education campaign about how, how to shade the peak and why that's important, um, and then getting folks to switch their clocks occasionally. So that's one big project, but that will be, it's very, you know, in the um, inception phase. So coming next year. Um, but everything else is going really well. Um, our code evaluation and recommendations report um, that came out early this year, we're still working on that. We've gotten some snags. Um, we're hoping to get to council by the end of the year. We were hoping to do it this summer, but um, things happen. So we're hoping to go to council for direction to update our code and design standards for water efficiency um, for new and redevelopment on mostly landscape and this will be um, we were going to do it anyways but it's also a good reaction to the Senate Bill 05 that just passed this year banning non-functional turf on commercial institutional and industrial spaces so that will be in there as well and then we'll get ahead of that curve when we're meant to react on um, January 2026 and we're hoping to implement something um, in 2025. The language of the Senate bill was what? Banning what? Banning non-functional turf on um, commercial, industrial, institutional spaces. New, new development, right? Not yeah, yeah, new development. Yeah. New and redevelopment. Oh, was redevelopment too? I think, I believe, yeah. Ours will be new and redevelopment. Yeah. Um, and then the first draft of our water efficiency plan update has come to me internally so um, we're also hoping to launch that for public review next month so um, we should have something to you all for some review as well sometime soon for our efficiency plan and then yeah i think that's it okay question yeah, i have a question i don't know if it's probably not directed to you hope but um I was at Lafayette Water District Board, and they have a um, obligation, as I suspect one might have, on lead and copper um, plan uh, to turn in. And I didn't know if I had never really heard us talk about <laughs> the pipe infrastructure in Longmont and what our federal government obligations are for um, reporting how much of that needs to be looked at, eventually replaced, and, and, and funded, right? Yeah, so we've we've got that very uh, same requirements that everybody does. Um, we have been doing a pretty extensive uh, look at what our materials are. We've hired a contractor. I'm going to say within the last six to eight months has been actually going out and digging up a few of the older ones to see what they are. Since unfortunately. Um, and I, I think that contract's well along, um, and yeah, eventually we do have to get rid of all them. Uh, luckily, Longmont, I'll say, is in probably better shape than a lot of communities, um, partially because Longmont's a little bit newer community, and so it doesn't have as many older service lines. I mean, not to say we don't have a lot of them, <laughs> but, you know, Lama really grew up, so to speak, in the late 60s, the 70s, and 80s, and 90s. And so um, the newer you get, the less you have to do that. 
Oh, Chris, is, is there any more? Uh, just to add to what you said just a little bit, um, so the city put together a pretty extensive program, worked with CDPHE on that. Um, we were able to work out with them that 350 to 360 tests would be a representative sample for yeah. the city. Um, and so those are all complete at this point in time. And that report is getting ready to put out. There will be a presentation to council as well, but right now we're saying that we need our line three uh, of service lines at this point. Um, excuse, excuse me, you were saying what now? Um, that uh, we've tested about 350 uh, service lines uh -huh. uh, throughout the city that were randomly selected. And um, with our anecdotal information, our permitting information, uh, we can now say in accordance with CDPHE that we're a left free uh, community at this point. So, uh, can you define service lines just for me? So, is that that's that's piped from main to house yep. or no? Yes. Because that would sort of. the big, <laughs> that would have been the big problem with lead, of course. Yes. Yeah. And we didn't. And does that that suggest that we never had a lead pipe in the no, it does not. So do, what does that suggest then? I, I don't want to preempt yeah. any Oh, sure, other, of course. Yeah, I don't want to. Uh, I'm not sure what you want to say on the <laughs> yeah, record. I'm, sorry, I, yeah. I, I'm just curious about the. the but, so, so let's say that we do get lead-free designation. What does that mean? Maybe that's the question. That means or that MP3. at this point, we do not have any record of uh, lead service lines to any residents or commercial properties. Not to say that we haven't had them in the past, uh, but at this point in time, we do not have any current. That would be a miracle. You know, along that line, there, there <coughs> communities are being looked at the water quality per se. It sounded from what I've heard, and help me with this, I don't think we have any infractions in that area do we as far as our water quality? Not that I'm aware of. Um, the state is starting to do um, testing in schools and also uh, randomly in inside of homes uh, because there still is lead and solder in copper pipes um, so you can still get uh, indications of lead um, but our, our service lines from our mains right now we can say that they are not, we have no lead in those at this point. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Oh, all right. Any Sorry, no, I'm not there. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I guess. You're up on one again, right? Yeah, just, uh, I've got a short presentation here um, for the construction update on the Windy Gap. I kind of plagiarized uh, Northern's presentation we'll get once a month from them. Uh, this is actually a photo just from a couple hours ago today. Um, one of the one of the things <coughs> is not nice to note, if you look the crust of the dam is is consistent all the way to the to the west side. You, you may recall a couple months ago we talked about there was a dip, there was a, a low point on the west side of the dam that had to be brought up to the same elevation so that you could bring the entire dam up. They actually had to stop work on the crest of the dam until they could fill in that low valley point. And if you, as you look now, it's, it's, that's filled in and they're now doing um, lifts from one side of the dam to the other. So um, I don't know, the, when, when the dam's finished, it's about 3,000 linear feet. So and they got two and a half thousand or so your feet on the top of the dam. Big long runs, you know. Um, so it's, it's not as wide a dam, but, but the, the length of the crest is getting pretty significant. Um, but um, still going well. Um, and we talked a little bit about the fires. Um, the Alexander Mountain fire was, of course, just, a, just maybe five, six, seven miles north of uh, the Chimney Hollow site, they were actually in the mandatory evacuation zone. They got a, a mandatory evacuation on J July 29th and had to stay out of the area for seven days. So that was unfortunate for the project that, you know, seven days when 
all work ceased uh, to work on the project. Uh, so obviously they'll get seven extra days <laughs> at the end of the project to complete it. Um, it, it, it actually, I mean, the, the dam site itself wasn't ever in danger because it's pretty well stripped. <laughs> it, the, the fire wouldn't have hurt it, but you couldn't, you know, you wouldn't have been able to get in and out of the area. Um, the emergency personnel wouldn't have been able to come through there if need be. Luckily, the fire stayed north of Highway 34 and, uh, uh, and Big Thompson River, so that was uh, really good. So, yeah, they got, they got back, after a week, they got back in and they're, they're back working um, full, full shifts now. I was definitely thinking about them that day when I saw the evacuation and if they were in the zone. Yeah, I mean, there's 300 people out at the site every day, right? I mean, it's exactly. A, it's like traffic jam, I suppose. And, and, <laughs> trying you know, to evacuate fuel the trucks site, coming so, in, yeah. and everybody driving in and out. Um, yeah. The, the biggest is people. That many people coming in and out yeah. on top of everything was else was going on. Was everybody was going in trying to get animals with pickups and yeah. trailers, and I guess the day evacuation day. Uh, the road was crazy up there. <laughs> they, I mean, they have to keep a skeleton crew of some variety. I'm, um, I'm sure they have a security plan. I'm not privy to, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, they. I don't know what their security. Sure. If they had any security there at all, um, it's hard to say. Um, it'd be interesting to know. But yeah, so that was that was unfortunate. But, um, uh, work work is now progressing. Um, just real quickly, the upstream on the on the outlet tunnel, the upstream part of the tunnel, upstream half of the tunnel, similar to Button Rock, where the upstream, the, the main pipe is a, downstream is you're looking at it right there. You can see the pipe inside the tunnel. Upstream, it's just a big tunnel, um, and, and the valve chamber, main huge valve cha chamber in the middle of the tunnel. So that upstream uh, tunnel. Backfill is about done. It's got maybe five more weeks and then it'll be done, um, which is really good because as soon as that's all done, then they can start on the outlet tower. The outlet tower is probably, of course, you know, that's a nearly 400 foot tall structure. Uh, that's one of the real critical items on the construction of the, of the reservoir. Um, and they'll be starting and, and going up um, with that outlet tower. Uh, about the end of September, and uh, it will take about a year to finish that, probably. Um, grouting's been completed on the left above it, and uh, hopefully within a few weeks it'll be done on the entire dam site. Um, the last spillway slab was poured towards the end of last month, so the spillway is essentially completed, which is good. Uh, in the valve house, the, the plunger valve, the main valve that controls the entire project has now been installed. If you recall, that's the one they were kind of holding hostage in Germany. <laughs> uh, and uh, the crane for, for that facility has been installed. So the valve house is, is coming along well. Um, and they're preparing for a Carter Lake interconnect. This pipeline is going to then interconnect with um, Carter Lake. Uh, the pressure conduit that goes from Flatter and pump station up to Carter Lake that actually puts the water into Carter Lake. This will connect to that, um, allowing a couple different things. One is allow water to be um, delivered directly to Carter when Carter's down and Chimney Hollow's up. You can deliver directly um, and also as an emergency if something happens at the Flatter uh, pump, puppy the power plant or, and or the pump, uh, it, it provides a secondary way of getting water into Carter Lake, which is good for us. Um, the main dam is now about 250 foot tall, um, and the saddle dam is about 20 feet tall. It, it just, you know, started not too long ago. Um, but the saddle dam shouldn't take too long. Um, uh, it, it did get shut down and had to redo some air permits with the state of Colorado. But, um, so it's about four weeks behind schedule, but it, it going well. Um, this is where we are right now in the progression of the, of 
that day. I want to apologize for how cut small that is. <laughs> um, and in terms of change orders, we're still within budget on change orders. We have um, two reasonably large change orders this last month. Um, concrete um, cuts on the plinth, the main foundation of the dam as well. Um, post weld uh, heat treatment on the field wells. They, uh, they weren't working, the field wells weren't working like they had hoped, so they had to, they have to basically heat up the pipe and the weld and then let it all cool together. They were having some, some stress issues with, with the field problems. Um, and this is the overall uh, project cost to date. 507 was what was originally um, uh, contract amount. Uh, change orders of 57 million today, so we're at 565. But they've earned 411 million, so you know, um, earned about 72 percent of the project. So uh, that is good. Three years, and, and about what you expect with three of the four. We just what. Last week, we had a three-year anniversary of construction. So we're three of the four years, about 75% of the calendar, and we've done about 72% of the work. So, What's the completion date on the graph? Um, August of 25. So it's, we're one year away from construction completion. And, uh, so we're still on target. Still on target for getting it completed by uh, August of uh, 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 next year. So anyway, that's uh, kind of where we are. Um, nice not to report anything big, <laughs> other than uh, <coughs> shut down for a fire. So, uh, other so than that, no significant issues. Everything's progressing along all right. Nope. It, yeah, progressing very well. Um, and of course. Um, once a week, Northern does have a tour, so if, if anybody's interested, any board members are interested, mm -hmm. you certainly could uh, could sign up for any one of those. And, and okay. Go. Um, but, uh, and they've they've had they've all filled up. There's a lot of interest in in the project. So um, anyway, um, no questions. If any questions for ahead? Yeah. Sounds like basically good news. Yes, so far. Yeah. And right. like I say, if you go up Pole Hill Road, um, on the backside of Carter, you can see it. <laughs> it's right there. Uh, you don't even have to go on a tour. You just drive by there anyway. So when they shut off the Carter Lake, you know, that pipeline to the power plant in Carter, they'll have to actually shut down power, right? Generation too. No, they have to shut. To, to tie in? Yeah, to the tie in. Um, they have to shut down the, the pump, the force main pump from Flatiron Power Plant up to Carter Lake. So we won't be able to deliver for a month. We'll not be able to deliver any water into Carter Lake. But the main pen stock to, that goes to the power plant and then up to Horse Tooth will still be operational. So we um, won't be able to pull the full 550 CFS because you can't, I don't think you can get that much up to horse to. Um, it's whatever the capacity to answer the feeder canal will, um, will be all they can run plus what they deliver to uh, uh, Big Thompson. But yeah, the, the power plant and the penstock um, last year, Late last year, uh, early this year, there was a shutdown of the pen stock to tie in the pipeline that goes from Pole Hill, the pen stock, down to the valve house. But once that was in and the valves in, were put in there, then they turned that back on. So that's, that can be run independent of water to to uh, to the hill. Thanks, Ken. Uh, in your project listing, I don't know if yet to be available. Yep. He's on the list. Let's 
On this schedule. This is where he's northern water coming in, and <clears throat> we're going to have to contact. We have it as a tentative, okay. but we're going to have to reach out to them now that they've had to redirect some of yeah. the resources for the fire. So, because it looked like they had St. Brandon left hand end, up in watershed at all. Yeah, yeah, so I, I suspect like busy, some of the busy uh, agenda might for, be busy. Yeah. Comments or questions? Okay. Thanks. Sir. Any other informational items? Nope, they were in the packet. Okay. All right. And you can see items scheduled for future board meetings again, as we decided on cash and lieu, we'll just quarterly look at that. And uh, now, I doubt that what we decided as far as Changing the cash and new amount has that gone to city council yet? Um, that's scheduled for their first meeting in October. We um, try to keep it three months out from the event. Yeah. <laughs> and and we October is early enough because if you recall we set up to, to change actually yeah. January first. Yeah. So that'll give council um, three months. Well, and you have the contractors or enough notice on here's what's coming and here's when it's going to, the date you're going to see it on. So, I mean, just looking at the years, probably looking into next year if we want to do an adjustment on it at all, probably ought to look at sometime in the summer early to, to decide do we change it or don't we change it. And then I think it's a good schedule. I think the, the people we've been Kind of messing around when we're going to change it. It's all laid out. Probably, I think it'll work well. Yeah. I don't know if you've gotten comments at all from anybody. That yeah, I think that's the general, um, general feeling of the people that we've been talking with. They've been appreciative that if it comes to pass, that that's what council decides that they would have time to plan accordingly um, and to know that it might be set for greater than it is to maybe a three month window so they can do some of their, their financials for expect that to be staying the same for a year or so. Yeah. It's been good feedback. Yeah, and know that it's an annual event. I mean, once it kicks in its first of the year, they won't, they won't hear much from us until yep. we decide to do something the following year. So, no, I think it's a good plan. Yep, agreed. Much better. Um, any discussion on future water board agendas? No, I'm sorry, but I don't know that I met you. You are? Diane Christ, Councilwoman Christ. Are you here kind of on Marsh's behalf, or? Well, the feeling was that we could fill in where she's, you know, well, where she's not able to attend, so yeah. that we at least stay connected. So right now, Councilor McCoy is doing airport and I'm dropping in for water board, which I had told Marsha to begin with that I would try to second her whenever she needed, so here mm -hmm. I am. Nice to have you here. Thanks. It's a much better draw than airport. Okay. <laughs> what do you say? It's a much better draw to come here than to go to airport. I mean, I it's, so it's, 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 it's a great port. We're cool. And then they're kind of related, aren't they? Especially when there's a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, true. that was our maximal overlap, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a fire. We really like those airport guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other comments for the good of the cause? Not. We'll adjourn. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.